Thank you. Should we sing happy birthday? Yes. All right, ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear or I. Happy birthday to you. Who blows out the candles? I'll have to do it together. That's right. Just let them burn themselves out. Or we could, yeah, we could just enjoy the... The, the first stage of a lovely, a lovely glow. Not split out. Thank you, everybody, for, for making it possible to enjoy four years of uh, wonderful research and development. I want to see if the camera can focus on this. Oh, wow. Okay, almost. Excellent. All right, welcome, everybody, to the 7th of March Open Research Institute FPGA stand-up meeting. Uh, we have lots to talk about today. So uh, let's go ahead and kick it off. So Paul, you have the floor. Oh, okay. I have the floor. Um, miscellaneous stuff. None of it very directly FPGA. Um, I've been doing some work with this. This is the uh, the RF Bitbanger board. You can see a little progress has been made since the last time we played with this. We've got um, bandpass filters now. I put heat sinks on the power amplifier transistors and the display is connected and so forth. Um, it's mostly working. There's some problem with uh, getting the class E amplifier to behave itself. Uh, may have to switch to better quality capacitors. So that's where that's at. Um, and working... is this an open source project? Why, yes it is. And in fact, uh, on GitHub, I can put a link in the uh, in the chat, I suppose. You can find most of the details on this. Thanks to the creator, Daniel Marks. Very good. A um, little bit of progress toward getting um, a transmitter for the uplink, the uh, opulent voice transmitter. I think I have finally subdued the, uh, the Pluto and forced it to do the 8x transmit interpolator so that I can run a sample rate as slow as we need for opulent voice. The Pluto really expects the sample rate to be much higher for broader bandwidth signals, but uh, with a little little struggle, you can coerce it into going as low as uh, a couple hundred thousand per second, uh, which gets us into the ballpark that we need for, uh, for opulent voice, but just barely. Uh, any if we wanted to go any slower, we'd have to add some extra interpolation in software. Um, those are the projects. That open, the lab is working. I've been using it for uh, for some, many of these projects. The spectrum analyzer has been very key to uh, evaluating the RF bitbanger performance. I want to show you one thing that you may not have seen before. It's not an Open Research Institute project, at least not yet, but it is a very interesting FPGA project. If I can share a screen, which I can Let me make sure, let me, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Let's try that. Can you see the spectrum analyzer going? I sure can. This is- uh, With motion. This is Maya, uh, a project by Daniel Estevez. And what's interesting about this uh, waterfall display well, can you call, call it a waterfall if it's going up? Um, oh, sure, why not? <laughs> it's almost exclusively done in the Pluto. Most of it's done in the FPGA part of the Pluto. And there's a an app running in the Pluto's ARM processor that serves up a web page. And there's a web assembly app that's running on the local computer. So what you're seeing here is just my browser almost no work except for the actual graphic rendering is being done locally and very little being done by the processor on the Pluto. It's almost all in the fabric. And he's used, used Amaranth, which is a, a Python derived way of creating FPGA uh, firmware, which is very interesting. This is the first time that I've seen a significant real application uh, done without using the vendor tools on Xilinx. I'm sure it's not the only first time it's been done, but it's the first time I've noticed it. And this 
uh, spectrum analyzer is quite remarkable in performance compared to what you would be able to do in software. Uh, you can turn up the frame rate so fast that you can't see it fly by and it's still perfectly happy rendering it all and putting it on the screen it doesn't seem to be skipping anything or glitching. Um, what you just saw is a full screen display on a, a fairly high resolution monitor. Uh, and it can go a thousand frames a second. So <laughs> this is this is good. And maybe there's some lessons there for us to to consider learning. Yeah, for sure. And also it's been very stable, right? It's it's now run for multiple days. I have had a couple of instances where uh, where the rendering on the browser uh, would stop. What I don't know exactly what triggered it. it. It was always while I wasn't looking. So something else was going on on the computer it may have interfered with the uh, with the browser, but left to its own devices. This has run for many hours without any problem and just stream and stream and stream and stream. Uh, lots and lots of data going through. Uh, it's going over the uh, USB based Ethernet connection that the Pluto provides. So I can I can trace it with Wireshark and it it's a lot of data screaming by even though, uh, or maybe because all the work is being done in the, uh, in the FPGA. So we're getting, what we're getting is the actual uh, spectrum data going across every, for every line that gets drawn. Uh, what have I forgotten to mention? Oh, undoubtedly so many things. <laughs> We've done some, some, uh, uh, I'd say probably architecture work on, on opulent voice with respect to being able to handle the um, the parts in the middle, um, so we could we could probably talk a little bit about that because the the goal is to get this into uh, into an FPGA as well as into general purpose processors. Uh, so so there's been some progress there with some discussion and block diagram and uh, and the and the work that you've already mentioned. The interpolator work is related to that. Yeah, the interesting thing that's different between what we have in the software prototype and what we need for a real opulent voice transmitter is uh, push to talk and multiplexing. So uh, there's various states that you need to consider. There's a state where it's not transmitting, state where it's transmitting voice because you're squeezing the microphone, push to talk button, and then it has to be able to stop doing that. And there, the protocol, which we adopted mostly from M17, has procedures, there's a preamble at the beginning and a postamble at the end so that the receiver knows that it's ended smoothly and not just faded out. And then if you have some other data that's not voice, you need to sneak that in in between. So that little state machine and multiplexer and um, sort of push to talk handler is uh, Central, not a complicated element, but a, a central, complica uh, central, important element to the architecture to make this all fit together. Yeah, I, I think I might be able to to help out there. Um, we can, at the very least, we can get it simulated in MATLAB and Simulink. So this is stuff that uh, I would say this, like the state flow um, methodology in, in Simulink can can help with, and if we can get it working and simulated with Stateflow, MATLAB, and Simulink, then we can convert it and produce uh, open source HDL code uh, using some toolboxes from MATLAB. So that- Just to might... clarify, mo everything we've done so far is used the, the, the SDR as just a sample to RF converter, but pushing some of that modulation uh, work and maybe even voice coding work eventually into the FPGA will free up the processor and enable Higher performance. Yeah, that's that's what I'm advocating and 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 trying to help out with um, me and whoever else uh, is interested in this sort of work. So it might be a good time to talk about the workflow. Um, so what we have is a uh, we do have a startup license from from MATLAB. We have all of the toolboxes, including. Uh, Simulink and all of the the stuff that comes with Simulink. And one of the benefits of having the startup license, um, you know, which is wonderful, uh, very good partner to work with. MathWorks has been very supportive and is very interested in helping 
um, us achieve our open source goals. Um, and so, so one of the benefits that we get from from this relationship is a customized class. So our, we can have access to some training. And turns out MATLAB has a, a wide variety of classes that are that are free in digital signal processing, in physical systems, in uh, state diagrams, a uh, variety of stuff. And it's broken down into two large categories. One is MATLAB, you know, so you're 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 going to be describing things with with equations in sort of a programming language. Um, if you're familiar with Octave, which is the open source variant or open source version of of this class of tool um, and considered essentially a competitor to, to MATLAB. If you're familiar with Octave, then MATLAB is the thing uh, that's the commercial option. Um, and there's it's broken down into classes available for, for MATLAB, the procedural um, you know, descriptive language, and also Simulink, which is a drag and drop block diagram or flow graph uh, tool. And the state flow or state diagram work is through Simulink. So over the past week, since we talked last, I've taken the Simulink on-ramp, the state flow on-ramp. Um, I skipped over the MATLAB on-ramp because I already use MATLAB and, and Octave and we're familiar with it. And I plowed into the MATLAB fundamentals and finished it. It was a lot harder than I expected. It's a good class, it's free. I did signal processing with MATLAB and I did a wireless communications on-ramp. And so what I'll do, well, I've already sent out the links to all of these free classes to the list, and I'll put it here in the chat uh, for this particular meeting. What I'm taking next is Simulink Fundamentals, so it's a long class for Simulink. And so those things are all free, and the, the custom class that we're trying to put together is about generating HDL, or Hardware Descriptive Language Code, with Simulink. So that's a paid class that MathWorks offers. Uh, there's another one they offer called DSP for FPGA. There's another one that they offer that's programming Xilinx Zinc system on chips. Uh, and then another one, Zinc for SDR. And so since we're a Xilinx based effort, all of these things are, are probably something that, that we would be interested in. And what we have available to us is MathWorks uh, will put together a class that combines whatever we most prioritize from those four classes. They'll put it together for us. They'll offer it either as a uh, virtual class or in person. And I'm I'm hoping to make something that's hybrid so that we can have an in-person class uh, and also uh, make it as accessible as possible to anybody that wants to attend that can't get to like San Diego. Um, we have a full course write-up for each of these and it's already out to the list and on Slack. We need to go through these attachments um, for discussion and planning and figure out what we want. So the first two courses are to understand HDL coder, which is what converts MATLAB and Simulink to HDL code. Uh, it's human readable. And the couple of times that I've used it so far, it's 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 surprisingly good. So what, what it converts is uh, MATLAB and Simulink uh, to to HDL, it is it really is human readable and it's free, so you can do whatever you want with this code. You can publish it, share it, uh, build on it. There's no license restrictions whatsoever. This is a great tool. Yes, it's proprietary, but it's uh, pretty darn good. So targeting DSPs is also something that we are very interested in and keeps coming up. Uh, building efficient hardware for FPGA for DSP. And uh, yeah, we're gonna pick and choose the topics and try to really nail it down so we can get very good at this tool. So really what we're after here is a class that will combine elements of all of these courses, gets through the material as quickly as possible so that we can get ourselves educated using the tools that we have access to and getting experience with what is an industry standard workflow. That way we can better inform any open source team that's interested in building tools in this area, and there's a lot of them, uh, so that they can successfully compete. Our priority is to deliver the end product, the, the open source design. We need to pick the best tool for the job. We need to also help any open source team that wants to compete in this 
in this area. And there are several. The one that we've mentioned uh, previously with Maya is called Amaranth. It's a Python-based um, tool and looks good. So finding out uh, exactly how good HDL Coder is, getting good at that, and also getting good at Amaranth, I think will help everybody. Uh, it'll help us get to the, the end as quickly as possible, take full advantage of the things that we have, and also help open source tool teams along the way. So that's what I've been working on over the past week. We have a OFDM project uh, that's aimed more towards terrestrial, but might be good for space, uh, that is looking hard at the at the tool flow. Um, and you know, that, and providing an additional uh, bit of pressure on the decision making and and uh, delivering results, um, and of course, all of this we want to to publish and describe, like not just the end results and our own designs, but we also want to help with the process and making it more accessible uh, as widely as possible to anybody that wants to do this work. If this uh, works out which it will uh, one way or the other, then one of the places that will report on this and, and uh, interact with others is at, at DEF CON, uh, of course, later in the year when we do our demonstrations, but also at the IWRC or iWork conference in September uh, from IEEE. They're focused on uh, FPGA and um, workforce readiness. And what we plan on doing at that particular conference is to represent open source solutions for workflow. So all of this compare, contrast, learn HDL coder, MATLAB Simulink, uh, explore Amaranth will pay off in being able to stand up and, and present to uh, the largest uh, professional engineering professional organization in the world and say open source has a, a place here too. So it's kind of the long-term goal uh, from now through the end of the the year uh, 2023. Okay, so that's my report and we'll keep pressing ahead and get uh, a class put together. It should be, should be really good. It's all digital communications and turning ideas into hardware <laughs> through the magic of software, which I gotta tell you is completely thrilling to me. Uh, there's never been a better time to work on this stuff. It's remarkable, uh, the things that we have access to. Um, all right, so I'm going to turn it over to Everest, and you have the floor, sir. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, very interesting uh, to hear about Simulink. Uh, I'd like to uh, train on that because I, I'm not uh, a really uh, an HDL caller, and so it, it could maybe help me. At the same time, uh, Danny has uh, released the uh, Maya SDR based on Amaranth, and uh, I'd like to uh, to train also on that. Um, I think that I, I will have a, a meetup with him to discuss about all that. Okay, for the <clears throat> so for my side on the past week, I succeeded in. Uh, having a, a DVB GACE communication full duplex uh, with uh, with another guy uh, who has installed the same firmware as I have on the on the Pluto. So it is a communication between two Plutos of uh, the satellite with DVBS2 GSE and with uh, cold rate dynamic, which means that if there is a lot of uh, bit rate incoming, then the fake is increasing. And uh, if it is only a ping, then the, 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 the more robust fake is chosen. Uh, the ping latency is about 800 milliseconds. I think that I can uh, uh, maybe uh, improve it a little. I think that the flow is 600 milliseconds because you need two uh, two by two way of 
geostationary um, the transmission. And uh, I try to finalize the, uh, the firmware, which is uh, mainly uh, um, well, where we set all the parameters uh, of the MQTT. And then the, the Pluto is uh, doing all the stuff on the IP side and on the modulation. Um, I, I didn't uh, try to replicate uh, right now the Pluto uh, on the ORI side. Uh, as soon as I finished the, the firmware, I tried to, uh, to do it on Kerepi. Well, that's, uh, I think, uh, what I've done on my side on the, on the last week. Well, that's a lot. Okay, I think Karapi is ready for you. Um, we did move around some equipment, but I think we have the original Pluto back in Karapi attached to the computer. Is that right, Paul? I don't think so, but we can make that happen in the next little while. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that because we, we borrowed it to uh, to do some opulent voice stuff, but but we also bought two more Plutos for the lab, so we should be should have all the equipment back the way that it that it was or the way that it should be. Um, and is there any other equipment that we have on the way? I don't think so. We're I think we're good for now, right? I don't think we have anything on the way at the moment. Okay, and we didn't we didn't need to buy anything for RF Bitbanger except the the boards and the parts. There wasn't any new test equipment for that so far okay cool all right yes it should be should be ready to go if you have any problems at all with using the remote lab in any way just let us know okay thanks awesome all right james you have the floor uh all right uh here from remote lab south we've been getting more things prepared we actually just this morning got in a major piece of equipment that's going to help with a lot of the infrastructure repairs that we're doing for uh, the whole area, including the primary uh, building that the labs will be within, which was very exciting. We got uh, that, and that should help us expedite a lot of our work in the next coming months. So I'm very excited to see where we will be very soon. Awesome. Do you have any photographs of the equipment? or? Uh, I've got some video but it's currently on an sd card but i can see about getting that and posting it in the slack later yeah that'd be great great to see cool awesome um we have uh let's see i know that you all are already there in little rock and and ready to to attend the uh the ieee conference in september um but the rest of us have got housing and all the logistics settled so so we're we're good to come and we're we're looking forward to it. So we'll be there before and right after the conference, so we can do uh, meetings and and networking and stuff like that. So I think we'll just be working solid from now through September to make Remote Lab South work. I'm very excited to hear that everything's set up and that you guys will be coming by. We'll be excited to see you, and uh, I'm very excited to see where we will be. Yeah, it's all good. All right, anybody need anything? Is there anything that's needed or any any roadblocks that we haven't discussed? Oh, I think that I would need, but I think that it's on Kerapi or maybe on another server uh, for the, uh, not simulating, but uh, the MATLAB one. Uh, I work right now on the, trying to have the, the more power well, uh, the yeah, the power maximum output of, of the Pluto. Right now, my uh, RRC filter uh, has a gain which is not maximum, and uh, I'd like to uh, maybe try MATLAB to uh, to compute some coefficient, and and. After that, trying to uh, get it on uh, 
real spectrum analyzer, which means that right now I use uh, some SD analyzer, um, which could be sometimes some, um, uh, you know, some errors because of um, some leaks and something like that on the yellow. Yeah. Um, so I think that I will try, well, first I'll try uh, to, um, uh, to bid uh, the, the coef on my side, but uh, at the final, I'd like to use the spectrum analyzer and maybe the MATLAB uh, one. Uh, I have another question. I think that, so I, I don't know if it's, I think it's not simulink, but um, can we, uh, I, th I think that there is some trial about some components on xilinx. Um, for example, the, uh, I see that there is a LDPC decoder. Uh, I think that Ahmet has done one also. I'd like to uh, try it, but uh, there is, I think that there is trial on xilinx site which about well with the ax interface and all that which could be quite easy to integrate uh, i think that amit has done the, the the basic core uh but not all the glue all the 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 uh the integration uh on the on the xilinx uh, environment so maybe i don't know if it's possible to uh, try to uh to get the LDPC uh, decoder for Xilinx integration. The, the idea is just uh, to use uh, some software DVBS2 decoder, for example, Lin DVB from F4DAV, which is already available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And which is based on the AMET work on the LDPC uh, helper. And the idea is to help by the FPGA to improve the uh, the performance right so i don't know if it's possible to uh, to uh, get this trial or or maybe amit can can help me to uh, integrate it in in, uh, in the exciting environment i don't know yeah i think it should be we have a we have a full license for for vivado and for for xilinx and for Vitus and all of that. So, so it's not, uh, uh, the tools are not a problem. Um, okay. and it should just be a question of integrating the, all the different code bases. Cause yeah, Amit has some amazing work here. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's good stuff. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, whatever I can do to help. Uh, oh, so yeah, you should have access to the, to the license. You have to check it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but in, and sometimes, yeah, it should be working uh, <laughs> and just let us know if it's not. So you should be able okay. to log in and check out the license and then then there should be no tools problems at all. Um, and then it's just a question of, of integrating the different uh, different source codes. Okay, at the same time, uh, just, uh, I don't know if there is any status on the uh, DVBS2 receiver on the FPGA, I think that there is, there is a group on that, but I don't know if there is a uh, move forward or uh, what's the status on that. Is it in a idol or? Yeah, we need to do a receiver um, and there has not been any progress since uh, January, but um, so I've been working on trying to figure out how to, uh, how to help. So, so what I've done is study um, multi-rate and polyphase filter banks so that we have, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about receiving the, the uplink and providing the, the data um, for, a, for, but for receiving, like with respect to a, to a ground station, um, what we have so far, I think is, is pretty um, minimal. So I think we need to move forward on that and work harder on that. So when I when I work on receivers, it's the uh, space side receiver uh, to receive the opulent voice uplink or or to or just a general um, general receiver. That's what I've been working on since 
uh, since January. Yeah. So I so don't the, know yeah. of any. I don't know of any so, progress for DVB S two receive since yeah. So since you're January. More you are more focused on the. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I'm more more aware of. Yeah. Uh, but we yeah, absolutely yeah. need to do the receiver on the ground. Um, yeah. And we're light there. We do, we do not have uh, anybody actively working on that yet. We can try to recruit some some additional people. We lost a couple of people to to job changes uh, in December. The people that were interested in working on it. So we're a little bit okay. light there. We need okay. to do it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for a bit. Yeah. In other words, there's opportunities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, good deal. All right, any other questions or anything anybody needs? All right, thank you everybody. This is fantastic. Um, it's a, a real honor to be able to work with you all and to to help in any way. Uh, it's a fantastic project and, and we have lots to offer the open source world. Uh, and uh, we had a very happy birthday Open Research Institute turned four years old yesterday, and we are looking forward to a wonderful year ahead of us uh, with lots of lots of fun things going on. So thank you, everyone, and see you again next week. Mm -hmm.